Hey guys, welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. My name is Madison, and today we're going to be doing this Morticia Adams look and a true crime story. So always trigger warning for very graphic content, and the description for this actual makeup look will be written inside the video. So buckle up, and let's get started. In the 1890s in Massachusetts, the Bardens were a middle class family until Andrew Barden made heavy profits off of his casket business. At the time of his death, his estate was $3,000. In today's money, that would be $3 million. Although they were a very wealthy family, they lived a very frugal life. They didn't have the amenities that most wealthy people of the time had, which this included indoor plumbing and electricity. His daughters, Lizzie and Emma, had a very religious background, even teaching Sunday school. Their mother died when they were young. Three years after her death, their father married a woman named Abby. The girls believed that she was after their father's money. This caused the relationship to become sour. Morning of August 4th, 1892, the family woke up extremely early that morning. Their maid, Bridget, which was also nicknamed Maggie, made breakfast for Andrew and Abby. Prior to this day, the whole family was feeling ill because they believed they were eating spoiled mutton. Emma was away visiting friends, so she was not in the home. Lizzie slept in that day. John, the girl's biological mother's brother, left that morning after spending the night discussing business with Andrew. Andrew decided to go into town around 9 a.m. While he was away, Abby went upstairs to make up the guest room. Andrew returned, but he had trouble with his keys and knocked on the door, and Bridget answered the door to let him in. Lizzie eventually came downstairs and said Abby received a letter that her friend was ill, and she left. For no reason to believe that she was ever lying, Andrew settled in into the sitting room and took a nap. Bridget was feeling very ill, so she went into her room to take a nap. Some time later, she was abruptly woken up by hearing Lizzie screaming downstairs. She said, Maggie, come quick, my father is dead. Someone came in and killed him. When she came downstairs, she saw Andrew slumped on the couch he took the nap on. His head had ten hatchet marks and one of his eyes was even split into two pieces. This suggests that he was asleep when he was attacked. He was still bleeding, which indicated that the attack just happened. Lizzie ordered Bridget to go next door to the neighbors to get a doctor. With all the commotion, neighbors called the police. Abby's whereabouts were still unknown. Lizzie stuck to her story and told police that she left after hearing her friend was sick. But when Bridget and a neighbor went upstairs, they found Abby's feet sticking out behind the bed. First, they believed she fainted hearing the news from Lizzie, but then they soon realized she was laying face down in a pool of her own blood. According to forensics evidence, she was facing her killer. She was struck on the side of her head with a hatchet just above her ear. This caused her to fall. She fell face down, which she was struck 17 more times in the back of the head as well as her back. In the beginning of the investigation, Lizzie was not a suspect, but the days following, police found things not to add up. And they started suspecting Lizzie. In the basement of the house, they found two hatchets. One of the hatchet's handle was broken. It was believed to be the murder weapon. The break was fresh, as well as dust was manually put on the hatchet to make it look like it was there for a while. But they found no blood on the hatchet. Police also tried to find the note from Abby's friend, but they couldn't find it. When they asked Lizzie, she said she must have burned it. Days before the murder, they found out Lizzie was trying to buy cyanide. She could not buy it because she didn't have a prescription. At this time, cyanide was prescribed. Later in court, this was found to be dismissible 
because there was no relation to the case. One of Lizzie's friends found her burning one of her dress on the stove. When she asked why, Lizzie said it was stained. However, with the nature of the crime, the perpetrator would be covered in blood. And Bridget testified that there was no blood on Lizzie. There is a theory that Lizzie did the murder nude. But knowing the dresses back then, it was very hard to get in and out of. And normally, you would have someone help you get into it. Which was very unlikely because Bridget testified that Lizzie was in a blue dress and when she came downstairs and found her father, she was also in that same blue dress with no blood on it. In the time frame of the murder, it would have been nearly impossible for her to get in and out of that dress. And during the investigation, Lizzie would often contradict herself. For example, she said she was downstairs to remove her father's shoes, but his shoes were on when he was murdered. Other evidence that the police gathered was they found a hatchet in the neighboring farm, but soon realized that it was meant for chickens. As well as an unidentified man reported near the property during the murders. The trial took place June 5th, 1893 in New Bedford, Massachusetts. This case arose a lot of publicity and media because of the time, as well as her being a woman. During the trial, the victim's head were removed during autopsy and were used for evidence. But during the trial, one of the coverings fell off of the heads and Lizzie fainted in the courtroom. After a 15-day trial, on June 20th, 1893, after only a nine-minute deliberation, the jury acquitted her for lack of evidence. And they also believed because she was a woman that she could not commit the crimes. Although most people do believe that Lizzie was responsible for the murder, there are some other suspects. The other suspect is John Vinica Morris, which is Lizzie's biological mother's brother. John was not seen from 9 a.m. to noon the day of the murder, and his alibi is that he was visiting a sick relative from down the road at the time of the murder. He also claimed that he was with the town doctor, the same doctor that was at the Bordens. This is a huge contradiction in his story. Also, Abby was found dead in the room that he reportedly slept in the night before. Also, he was reported to be very angry because of his talk with Andrew, because of his generous gifts of land and money to Abby's family, as well as a failing livestock business between them. There's also some theories about the will of Andrew. Noted that him nor the girls were in it, that everything went to Abby. Another suspect was the maid Bridget. Her bedroom was just one floor above the guest room. And she testified that she wasn't fully asleep but she did not hear the murders happen just a floor below her. There's another theory that Lizzie and Bridget conspired together to kill. The theory claims that Lizzie and Bridget were romantically involved and Abby caught them in the act. So they decided to kill Abby first upstairs and then kill Andrew in the sitting room. But this theory is a little far-fetched because there is no evidence truly supporting any of these claims. The only claim is that Lizzie later in her life said she had a crush on an actress. But other than that, there's no evidence. After that, Lizzie and Emma 
refused to live together. Emma refused to even speak to Lizzie. But to this day, still no one knows who actually killed Mr. and Mrs. Borden. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to see more from me. All my other social media links will be linked down below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Thank you.